time for Children's Church, unless they've already met, made their exit. They have, good. Three children. She's already back there. She's already back there. She's ready. <laughs> and while they're going to Children's Church, let's open our Bibles to Revelation chapter 20. <coughs> Revelation chapter 20. We're going to begin in verse 11 today. We're going to read through verse 15. Revelation 20, 11 through 15. And when you find your place in the Word of God, would you stand as we read today? Revelation 20, verses 11 through 15. This is the end of our end time series today. And um, this is where it all ends up. It all takes, takes place right here at the Great White Throne before Christ makes all things new. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Father, would you now speak to our hearts as clearly as we've ever heard I pray, Father, that this word today um, would, would strike not only just a conviction within the hearts of those who have never trusted in Jesus. I hope that they realize today that this is where it all ends up. If those who do not have Christ stand before that great white throne, they will be forever, forever lost and condemned. Lord, we as Christians should be broken hearted as we read this passage. We should be moved to share the gospel like we've never shared before, and we should be moved with great thankfulness for not only the cross of Jesus Christ, but the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you that 2,000 years ago, many of us, our judgment was sealed when, we, when you went to the cross on our behalf, when you died for us. Lord, it doesn't have to be this way. People do not have to go before the great white throne. They can trust in Jesus even now. They can give their life to Him. So I pray, Lord, that you would move in this service. I pray, Father that you would speak to our hearts and change us, Lord. And we're going to glorify you for what you do today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. You better be honest. Because not only are we in church, but it's Sunday. It's a new week. And everybody's got a chance to tell the truth. Have you ever been to court before? Raise your hand if you've been to court. Bunch of sinners. <laughs> I've been to court before too, and I can hear the shock in your voice. I have. Um, I live life on the edge. I'm a dangerous man. Right? Uh, I went to court once over a ticket I received for allowing somebody to, to, I was following somebody too close, and I bumped them at less than five miles per hour. They sued my insurance, and so I had to go to court. I'm guilty. I hit them. And I got a ticket. And was summoned to appear in court to either go, go to court or pay the fine. I'm like, well, I'm going to court because I'm not paying this fine. Being that I was a college student, broke as a joke, I chose to appear in court. And I remember dressing up, shirt and tie, Sunday vest. I remember, I remember the long road to Buckingham County Courthouse because there weren't any parking spots that in the courthouse. We walked like two miles to get there. I remember going through the metal detector and them saying, what have you got in your pockets? And I'm like, nothing, I promise. And then I remember writing out my last words in the event that I go to jail. And I remember having to sit in a room that day. I sat in a room with all kinds of strange people. And I'm telling you, they must have all been death row candidates. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I just I just bumped somebody. And I'm like, why am I sitting next to me? And there was this, there was this one guy who had really big muscles and this big tattoo and a skull. And he's kind of growling, and I'm like, this is the man that's going to be my cellmate. Yeah. <laughs> but the sweet thing was, is I got off without a fine. The DA wrote the ticket off my record. Everything was good because my insurance promised to pay you know, for the damage done to the car. I, I never wanted to go through that again. 
That was enough for me. Okay? Court gives me the creeps. All right? My court appearance, or even all of the major, okay, way major, way more major court appearances in the world, cannot compare to the coming court day that billions upon billions of people without Jesus Christ will have. This is going to be the most solemn, the most severe, the most intense, most condemning court case in the history of the universe. Actually, this will be the last court case ever held. This will be it. All of the dead, all of those who have never trusted in Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord will, and I say they will, okay, that's a promise, will stand before Almighty God and they will receive judgment for, for their sins because they refuse to give their life to Jesus. This is the end of the end times. Okay? There, there will be no other place to go. There will be no other place to hide. There will be no retreats. There will be no appeals. No suspensions to a later date. No opportunity to beg for mercy. The score will be settled this day. There will be, the sin will be exposed. Faith will be issued out. There will be no more time to make the matter right. This is for forever. This is for eternity. There will be no more chances. There will be no more grace. There will be no more services, folks. Not like this. There will be no more worship songs. Not like this. There will be no more sermons. There will be no more altar calls. There will be no more ministry visits. No more prayers for the lost. This is it. So many will be there, though, before Almighty God to pay for their sins. There will be a judge, but no jury. There will be a prosecutor, but no defender. There will be a sentence. There will be no appeal. This is the final judgment of the world. And after all these things that we have studied and read about over the last two months, after all those things, okay, after, after the rapture, after the tribulation, after the persecution and the, the martyrs, all these things, okay, after this, after the seven years, this is the end. God has been good and God is good. But, but He is patient and He is compassionate and He is merciful and forgiving. But at this moment in time, His just nature comes into effect. Why is there not another chance, people ask? Why does it have to be this way? Simple answer. Because the lost sinner did not want Jesus while here on earth. They heard Him preach. You're hearing it preached. They, they've heard the songs. They've been to the services. They've seen it on TV. They, they've read the Word. They've heard the message but did not receive for thousands upon thousands of years since sin broke into the world. God has been trying to get our attention. And, and the Gospel has been preached and the blood has still been saving and then salvation has been freely offered to anyone, anywhere, at any time. But when this moment comes, when the great white throne judgment happens, there's not going to be any more preaching. There's not going to be any more singing. There's not going to be any more church going or altar calls or grace. Time after time, God has been trying to wake this world up, but many have not listened. Many still do not respond. But there's still not, there's not going to be any more time. Just eternity. No more time for us to do what we want to do. No more time for people to live life as we want them to live it, to call our own shots, to be the king of our own world. That's all over when it comes to the judgment. This passage should make your heart tremble. It should cause your spirit right now to, to just shake because it should humble you. Because I think about the, the magnitude of this moment. And as I think about all the condemnation that's going to be carried out at this moment, as I think about all the people who will be judged and convicted, lost forever at this moment, and then sent away into the lake of fire, this passage should serve as a warning, not just for the lost, but for the believer too. For the non-believer, this is your warning to get right with God. This is it. This is your final warning to trust in Jesus Christ. You treat today as this is your final warning. This is your final warning to come to the cross. This is your final warning to make no more excuses, to make no more regrets. This is your final warning before the judgment takes place. And for the Christian, this passage ought to move your soul to never be complacent again with the things of God. Don't ever do that. Okay? There are so many that are lost and destined to hell. This passage ought to cause you to pray. This passage ought to cause you to cry out to God. This passage ought to break your heart and put you on your knees and pray for the lost and pray for opportunities to witness to the lost and bow to share the Lord Jesus.
Jesus Christ as you've never shut it before, before it's eternally too late. This, cho this is a choice to make here today. We've often asked the question, what am I going to do with Jesus? But when this moment comes, it's not going to be, what am I going to do with Jesus? The question is going to be, what is Jesus going to do with me? You see? I've shared this before. It's as relevant today as it was years ago. If you were born once, you die twice. And if you're born twice, you die once. This morning, I want to take you to that last court case in history. We're going into the courtroom on that terrible judgment day. And here's the reality. Some of you will be there. Some of you will. Some of, some of you will be there because you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. But understand, this, this is the last court case. The last court appearance that many people will ever make. This is the last act that the judge will have to do. This is the last judge they will stand before. Once this moment is over, God will never have to judge again. The decision will be final. The sentence will be issued. And there's no escape. The thing is this, hell is forever. Okay, hell is, hell is forever. The lake of fire is forever. This text is so plain, so clear. Eternally frightening, but the judgment is right. It's just. Jesus said in John 8, 34, you will die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am He, that is the, the Messiah, the Son of God, you will die in your sins. Take a few moments and let's see some insights on this judgment day. Number one is this. This will be a day before the judge. <coughs> this will be a day before the judge. Look at verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne in Him who sat on it. Him referring to Jesus Christ. The foundation of the judge. John saw the judge, the Lord Jesus Christ, on a great white throne. Can you imagine this? All that John saw, he doesn't talk about the glories of heaven anymore. If you look in Revelation chapter 4, you see a bunch of worship taking place. Okay, you, you read about colors and angels and you, you hear the songs of, of the redeemed. This is not the picture that's painted here, okay? All you see here is, is the Lord up on a, on a high white throne. Kind, kind of eerie. Okay, in Revelation chapter 4, this is a worship moment. But in Revelation chapter 20, this is a wrath moment. Okay, this is not a Revelation 4. This is judgment. And there will be people as far as the eye can see. Can you imagine that? Great, great white throne. Okay? And, and the Lord seated upon it. And people, I mean, people so far that you, you, you can't, as far as your eye can see, lined up to stand before Him. It's just them, okay? It's just their sin, and it's the wrath of the Lord. There's no more worship. There's no more praise. There's no more prayers. There's no more forgiveness. There's no more mercy. No more worship. Just wrath. And the foundation of this judge will be His throne. Why does He sit on a throne? Because the king is in charge. Because the judge must sit on the seat of authority. The throne is the seat of power. The throne is the seat of judgment. This is the seat of Almighty God. Nobody else is sitting there but Him. He calls the shots. And it's greater than any throne that you'll ever stand before on this earth. Okay, greater in power, purity, prominence. Look at the face of the judge. The verse says, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. This is the face of Almighty God that they have to look into. People say, I'd like to meet eye to eye with my Savior, but this is that moment. Okay, we get so many pictures of Jesus in the Bible, don't we? We see Jesus as a sweet baby. We see Jesus as a knowledgeable teen. We see Jesus as a carpenter. We see Jesus as a great teacher and, and a great powerful miracle worker. And we see Jesus as compassionate. We see Him as a friend of the sinner. And we see Jesus as the hero of the adulterous woman and the deliverer of the demon-possessed and the healer of the sick and deaf and mute and maimed. We see Jesus as the all-sufficient, sacrificial Son of God. But here at the great white throne, we see Jesus as the great, almighty, powerful, and right just judge. And if you want a picture, look at him in Daniel chapter 7. It says, I watched till thrones were put into place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. And his garment was white as snow. The hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame. Its wheels of burning fire, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousands, a thousands, thousands ministered to him. Then thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated. The books were open. In Revelation 1, 13-16, John gives a description of the Son of Man. He said He was clothed 
with a garment down to the foot and a gird about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were like white wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. This is the judge. He is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb who was slain, but who is now alive and reigning and glorious and all-powerful. And He sits on this throne in heaven, and it's not for looks. He's sitting as judge. And I'm telling you, when people stand before Jesus on that great judgment day, this is not going to be the sweet Jesus, the sympathetic Jesus, the saving Jesus. They are going to get the ruling and reigning Jesus in truth and in justice and in holiness. And He's not going to be their Savior, folks. He's not going to be their Lord. He wanted to be, but instead He's going to be their judge. And you ask, who gives Him the right to be judge? I know how people are. I can hear the proud now boast and say, who is this guy to be my judge? Who gives him the right to condemn me forever? Who gives him the right to take the stand? I thought this was about equality is what they would say. I'll tell you what gives him the right. His holiness gives him the right. His righteousness gives him the right. His perfect sacrificial death that you didn't want a part of gives him the right to be judged. Jesus is the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. But now the people are saying, I'll take the sins upon myself. He has the right because he's worthy. Than the fear of the judge. Scripture says from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. It is a fact that many people do not fear God. And many live as if he doesn't exist. Many ignore his word. Many make a mockery of following him. But when the wicked stand before God, these things cease. The fear of God will be in every heart and every soul when they stand before the Lord. Actually, all will cease for this moment. Heaven and earth flee, the Bible says. Heaven and earth flee at His face. Christ is so great that the earth and heaven have to go. This makes way for the new heaven and new earth, I know. But we're in a scene of nothingness. Just you and God. The contaminated, sin-filled earth and universe literally go out of existence at His presence. It's just going to be you and Him at the great white throne. There will be nowhere to run or hide. You're not going to be able to make a secret escape. You're not going to be able to hide in the darkness. You're not going to be able to slip off somewhere and, and, and force God to go search for you. you. Those who stand before the Lord on this day will meet the judge and fear will be upon every single soul. It's not going to just be a day before the judge. It's going to be a day of judgment. Look at verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Who will be judged? The dead. Small, great. People of all kinds are going to stand before the judge. Nobody's going to be excluded from his judgment apart from the believers in Christ. The Bible says that there may be many types of people who stand before God, but there will be only one category, the spiritually dead. That's it. Okay, the spiritually dead are those who are outright sinners. The spiritually dead are those who are puffed up with pride about themselves. They are fools who say in their heart there is no God. These are the blatant blasphemers. The spiritually dead are those who, who strutted their sin day in and day out. They didn't take God seriously. They did not fear Him. They, they were self-righteous uh, people. They, they spoke evil of Him. They abused Him. They will stand before God. But also the self-righteous will stand before God. Those who, who, were, who thought that they were well off. They, did, they, didn't need a, they didn't need a doctor. They were well, they said. They, he came for the sick and the broken, but they said, I, I don't need his cure. These are self-righteous people, but they're very good people. they got to work with you. They're in your family. they they go to school. They, they weren't bad people. They didn't kill or steal or cheat. They, they think that they're too good to be in hell. They, they don't deserve it. They're entitled to heaven. And here's the truth. Dr. Greg Mathis said this just a couple of weeks back. Nobody too bad is going to heaven, and nobody too good is is going to hell. Nobody's too bad to go to heaven. Nobody's too good to go to hell. Nobody's too bad to go to heaven. Nobody's too good to go to hell. No matter how good or bad we've been, 
if you don't know Jesus, you stand alone. It's not about how good you are. It's not about how bad you are. It, it's about what Jesus has done for you and whether or not you believe that there will be self-righteous people at the throne. There will be those who have put off the gospel at the throne. There will be people that, that have heard the truth and they, they've heard the gospel. They put it off time after time again. You're not going to be able to do that any longer. Okay, uh, that, that's, that's why Hebrews 3 tells us now. Okay, make this right in your heart. Now, that's why 2 Corinthians 6 tells us that today, today, today is the day of salvation. You're not going to be able to put it off any longer when you stand before the throne of God. Ready or not, judgment comes. There's going to be churchy people at the throne of God. People who have bowed for prayer. People, people have put money in the offering plate. People have been to Sunday school. People have went to youth camp. People have sung along with the hymns and the songs. People who have Bibles. People who have heard the gospel but never truly responded to the gospel. People have never believed. Uh, people who have joined the, tr the, the church but have never joined the true church of Jesus Christ will be at the throne too. It's not about whether you're a Baptist. It's not about whether you're a Methodist. It's not about whether you're a Catholic or a Lutheran or a Presbyterian or a Calvinist or an Arminianist or whether or not you've memorized all 66 books of the book or the Bible or have had perfect attendance or have been on a dozen mission trips or have helped build buildings or served as leader. It's not about any of this. I'm not asking you what church you go to or where you went or where you belong to. I'm not asking you whether or not you've learned Amazing Grace or John 3.16 or how many of the commandments you've kept. I'm asking you do you know Jesus? That's what it's about. Do you know Him as your Savior and Lord? That's what it's always been about. It's all about whether or not you have Him because if you don't, it doesn't matter if you are somebody or a nobody or a wannabe body. You're going to face the judge. All the cells of the dead will be summoned. The dead will rise from everywhere. There's going to be people popping up all over the place. The Bible says that the sea will give up the dead. People that we thought were lost and you could not find, they will be found that day. And they're going to stand before the Lord. Nobody's excluded. Nobody gets a hall pass. The king, the bankrupt, the general, the soldier, the master, the slave, the borrower, the lender, all of these will stand before Almighty God. And there will be members of churches and there will be pastors who are not of the truth. There will be even deacons and popes and priests and choir members who will stand before the judge. There will be those who have heard the gospel and there will be even those who have never heard the gospel. But the Bible says that they are without excuse too. There will be drunkards there. There will be sexually more people there. There will be all kinds of addicts and liars and thieves and murderers and slanderers and gossipers and idol worshippers and witches and haters and coveters and rapists. They'll be there too. And there will be grandmamas there and grandpapas there and mamas and daddies and teenagers and brothers and sisters. All will stand before Christ. It's level ground there, folks. It's level ground there. No escape. No pass. No option to sell out for their soul would have already been sold in this life. I've got to ask you, judgment or today, would you stand before God at the great white throne for right now? Would you be there? You know the answer to that. Would you be one of those people? What about the process of their judgment? You can read it here. The books are open. God is the greatest note taker on the face of the earth. He's not going to miss a detail. Okay. His word sets the standard. Every, every word, every thought, every deed of every single person who's ever lived is recorded in heaven. Okay? Uh, he's recorded those books with accuracy. This is not Santa's naughty or not nice list. Okay? These are books that contain very vivid, intense, great detail of the lost life. And their judgment will come from their hearts, from their words, their deeds, the state of their souls. Nothing hidden this time. Nothing in from God. All will be laid bare before Him. And for the people who are in judgment, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one contest and confrontation with the Holy Almighty God. And, and it's going, to, uh, and it's going to, 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 to be their goodness versus the goodness of God. It's going to be their righteousness versus the righteousness of God. It's going to be their standard for, or their religion, their way of life, their God versus ours. Those are one of the set of the books. These books will contain every word and deed and, and, and conscience. Everything about the person will be laid before God to be judged. Again, it's you the sinner versus him the sovereign and supreme Lord. It's also going to be a day of justice. 
A day of justice, not just a day of judgment, a day of justice. Justice will be served. Look at 14 and 15. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. Done with. In one moment, done with. Death and Hades, over. This is the second death. Death is the state of death. Hades is the place of death. They're thrown into the lake of fire. And then one more book is going to be open. This is the book that will serve justice. It's the book of life. The Lamb's book of life. Look at 15. It says, And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is the largest registry ever made. You're not going to have to worry about whether your name's going to be there or not. Whether you know Jesus or whether or not. That, that proves that your name will be on the registry. This book contains all the names who have ever trusted in Christ as Savior. That's the book. It contains the names of those who have confessed with their mouth the Lord Jesus. It contains uh, those who have, who have believed in their hearts so that they could be saved. Those who have believed on Him and followed Him. Those names are found in the Lamb's book of life. If your name is written in this book, you will not face condemnation. Okay, You will face celebration in Christ Jesus. But if your name is not found, you will be cast in the lake of fire forever and ever for torment. My heart hurts when I read that. Cringe at the thought, I cringe at the thought of ever having to stand before the judge and see him search the book for my name and not being able to find it. There's a book that has a great list of names, but what if your name is not there? What if your name cannot be found? If your name is not written there, you will not have eternal life. I see the process, okay? I, I can see the process. All the dead. Great and small, one by one, coming before the holy, almighty God, seeing the books open, hearing the Lord explain to the individual what was required for them to be in heaven. But then he opens up that great book of life, looks through the names, only to find that your name's not in it. And he will say, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And I can hear the cries. Can you? And hear the, the moans and the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. And I can hear the wailing and I can see the tears. And I can hear the shrieking as the lake of fire consumes that person forever and ever. And the pain and the separation and the sadness. And I don't believe for a second that God's sitting on His throne and be smiling at this. I don't believe for a second that God does this joyfully. I don't think He does it proudly or willingly. I don't believe God takes any glory in a sinner being condemned. I believe He does it with a broken heart. And I, and I believe He does it with great reluctance. And I believe there will be many tears at the great white throne judgment of God from Jesus Christ Himself. And I can see Him and hear Him saying, If you only knew me, that's what it took. If you knew me, if only you truly gave your heart and your life to me, if you only had accepted my free gift of eternal life, if you have only confessed me and believed me, I'll confess you now. But he can't do it. I'm going to tell you something. God wants your name in that book. I don't care what people have told you in the past. God wants you to be in that book. God wants you to be in heaven. God wants for you to show, uh, to show, uh, to know His only Son, Jesus Christ, who came and bled and died and arose and paid the price for your sins and purchased your place in heaven. God wants you to know the price has been paid. God wants you to know that the blood has been shed. God wants you to know the sacrifice has already been made. The judgment has already been cast. You don't have to go through this. God wants you to know that. Don't you get that? If you leave this service today without Jesus, Jesus could come at this very moment. If you don't know Him, He's not going to know you. The day of justice is coming. And the last thing. You don't want to be a part of that day of justice. This day will give way to a day of joy. I've saved the best for last. Okay? After this great white throne judgment, God's going to make all things for, for the people of God. You can read it right there. Revelation 21 and 22. This is what God wants for you. This is what He has in store for you. A new heaven. The Bible says a new, a new earth. A glorious time with God. All things will be made new including you and including me. God will be with us forever and ever. And He will dwell with us. And He's going to wipe away those tears. Right? 
And it's going gonna, it's gonna to wipe away that sadness. And it's going to wipe away the sin. And it's going to wipe away the darkness. And he's going to see that there's no more death, the Bible says. And no more sorrow. And no more crying. And no more pain. And no more fear. All these things pass away. And it will be done. The day of judgment will give way to a day of joy. A day of celebration. The day of Jesus will be forever and ever after this takes place. But your name must be in the book of life. You must know Jesus Christ for the end times to end in your favor. You must know that Jesus is the Lord in your heart. You must confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You must come to faith in Him. And so, if this is the last one I get to preach, praise God, I beg you, get it right. <clears throat> know Jesus. I feel like the Apostle Paul when he said he'd give up his own soul just to see listeners saved. Okay, I'm praying today that everybody here will be with Jesus up there. Alright, the end times are rising. Please know the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, God loves you. God wants you. God died for you. God lives for you. And He wants to return for you. Don't you leave this place without knowing I'm thankful, folks. I'm, I'm thankful for the day Jesus saved you, my soul. Okay, I, I'm thankful for that day in Tacoma, Georgia, when, when God came to my life. I'm so thankful for the moment when I trusted Jesus and called on Him to save my life. I've never regretted it. Never, never. There, there's not a pleasure in this world or sin in this world that I'd rather have than Jesus. Okay, I, I'm so glad that I'm not going to the great white throne. Okay? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going there. I'm so thankful that my case was settled 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ paid it all for me. I don't have to endure the wrath to come. I don't have to go into judgment for my name is written in the book of life. I know it. Do you know it today? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior today? I've got Him in my heart. How about you? I know the Lord. I'm going to be with Him forever and ever. I've called upon the name of the Lord and I've been saved. Amen. Oh, good. <laughs> don't know him, this is your opportunity. This is it. You don't have to wait any longer. If you don't know Jesus, this is it. This is it. Steve, would you come? We're going to go into a